Okay, so tonight's class should be a Lilui Nishmat for Eliezer ben Tamara and for Acheli Chaya bat Yehudit, and it should be a Rafur Shlema for Emmanuel ben Mazal. Tonight is possibly the last class we're going to have here before Rosh Hashanah. It's definitely the last class for men and women. And it's a very important class. Before we start, um, I want to say that I know everybody's going through a difficult time right now. Almost every single person that I speak to on the phone, in person, through email, through text, everyone is going through a tremendous trial, tribulation right now, which even though on paper that seems very concerning, and obviously it's very difficult, at the same time, when you see so much, so to speak, go wrong, sometimes that makes you feel consolation. Because you realize this is mala mina teva, this is something above nature. You know, sometimes, let's say you fail a test because you didn't study, so then you might think that's you, and then you're going to have the yeyush that comes with the fact that you didn't study hard enough. But what happens if you're going to take the test, and after you take the test, you fail, and then you walk home and you trip and you sprain your ankle and then the bus stops by and the water just sprays all over your face and then your parents are upset at you because you ruined your new dress so like when you have all of these things happen at one time then somehow you can actually get comforted because it's not normal that you should be having so many difficulties and trials at one time and this is what I feel like we're all going through right now prior to Rosh Hashanah and Bezrat Hashem all of these miniot, uh, all of these obstacles, all of these barriers towards experiencing joy and happiness and peace and parnasa and zivug and uh, everything we're looking for, all of these miniot, like Rabbi Nachman says, should turn to ne'imot, should turn to bliss, the highest ecstasy. Uh, Rav Natan, his main student, he used to get letters all the time from people who had learned Rabbi Nachman's teachings while he was alive and was now looking for advice and consolation while Rabbi Nachman's not here. And Rav Natan used to write the same thing over and over to everybody. There's nothing for me to tell you. Everything is already written down in his books. If you want an answer to your question, I promise you the answer is in those books. Look through them, and then look through them again, and again, and again, and again. You'll find an answer to all of your problems. However, I will tell you, Rav Natan says, that there is a crazy way, Rabbi Nachman used to say, that all of the suffering, that all of the trials and tribulations, that all of the pain, that all of the confusions can come together in one moment and completely flip. He used to say that Rabbi Nachman would say that Hashem has a way that He can make it all turn out for good in the end, even though on paper it doesn't look like it's going in that way at all. It actually could look like it's going completely the opposite way. And in fact, we have a precursor for this. We have a marker for this. It's Geula. That Chazal say, we cannot wait for Yemot Mashiach. We can't wait for the days of Mashiach. But please don't let us be there. What do you mean? The days of Mashiach are going to be ultimate peace. We're not going to have any difficulties, no trials, no tribulations, no emotional suffering, no physical suffering, no financial suffering, no suffering anymore. Who wouldn't want to be there for that? And the answer is that prior to that, it looks the opposite of that. But there is a way that Hashem can make it and will make it that the whole entire thing flips for good. Bezrat Hashem, it's this Rosh Hashanah that that happens, not just for us personally, but for thousands and thousands of years of exile that we've been through Spanish Inquisition and Holocausts and uh, slavery and servitude and oppression and pogroms and ghettos and suffering the worst atrocities for thousands of years, that Bezrat Hashem, this Rosh Hashanah should be the time that the entire thing flips and becomes the greatest bliss. So in the schut of this class, Bezrat Hashem, and everybody who's involved, and the people who contributed and sponsored, and those who are sitting here today, that Bezrat Hashem, everyone who's trying to go to Uman this year, despite all of the difficulties, 
despite on paper um, it looking like an iron wall, that in the schut of this class and us continuing to pound the muna and to pound the truth of truths and to pound the fact that there is nothing else besides Hashem, that Hashem should break open everything. And everyone who wants to be an Uman this year should be an Uman this year by the Rebbe for Rosh Hashanah so we can pray for all of our brothers and sisters and family and friends and we can make all the Meneo turn into Ne'imot. So this class should be attached to the Tzadik Yisur Allah, Rabbi Nachman and Fei Gazal. Bezret Hashem, he'll take us all the way. With the Kaddish Baruch Hu. I was thinking about what to speak about tonight, and Rosh Hashanah is coming. So I want to speak about something that I think is commonly misunderstood, and it's very important, and it's really the Ikar of Rosh Hashanah. So I'm going to open up a lesson from the Kutim Aran. This is Siman Kuv Pei Hei. Lesson 185. He starts and he brings the Zohar. The Zohar says, Kad Yisrael, Ishtalimu ba'avdaihu kivyacho shema kadisha ishtalim. When the Jews are complete in their service of Hashem, Hashem's name, so to speak, is complete. So what are, already are we getting from the Zohar? The Baal Shem Tov was told by Mashiach, that when people are able to make Yehudim, unity of Hashem's name, the Geul is going to take place and Mashiach is going to reveal himself. What does it mean to make Yehudim, to make unifications? So Rabbi Nachman speaks about this, the Baltanya speaks about this, every Hasidic master and all the Kabbalistic masters. And it's brought down in Halakha for Sephardim, that before every single mitzvah we say L'Shem Yehud, that from the sake of this mitzvah, there should be a unity that takes place. What's the unity they're talking about? Everything in this physical world, including yourself, is drawn down from four elements. Those four elements are rooted in the four letters of Hashem's name. A yud and a he, and a vav and a he. Every quality that comes from you is rooted in those names. And also, all of the difficulties that you uh, experience in your life, they're also rooted in those names, in those letters. What is the entire mission of a Jew in his lifetime and the Jewish people over the course of history? That we should make Hashem's name one. We say this in Elenu three times a day, that Hashem should be one and His name should be one. What does that mean? Right? We cap off the entire tefillah with this. I understand Ein O Milvado, nothing else besides Hashem. I understand the Hafta Lerecha Kamocha, where you should love your brother like yourself, you should love Hashem with all your heart, your soul, and your might. What is that you, Hashem is going to be one and His name is going to be one? What's so great about that? The answer is like this when Hashem's name is unified, every good thing in the world is revealed. When Hashem's name, so to speak, the letters in, of His name are not connected, they're not unified, they're separate from each other, they're concealed from each other, that's where all negativity takes place. That's where all concealment of godliness takes place. So really, what is going to be the cause of all good in this world? When Hashem's name is one, when the letters are all together. Yud and the He and the Vav and the He. And now the Zohar is bringing a very, very beautiful point. When is that going to take place? When the Jews are complete, Hashem's name is going to be complete. What's the connection between Hashem's name and the Jewish people? That sounds like a big responsibility. Hashem's name is only going to be complete when I'm complete. So I'll teach you, I'll teach you something very, very deep. The Zohar says that Kuchabrichu Uchachinte. They are right to Echad. That Hashem, His Shekhinah, the Torah are all one. What is His Shekhinah called in this world? Klal Yisrael. The presence and the revelation of godliness in this world is separated in 600,000 root souls and is revealed through every single Jewish neshama in the world. And this is the reason that Mashiach cannot come, says the Gemara in Yavamot, 
until all the Jewish souls have been born into the world. Why? Because we are all the revelation of Hashem's name. That means if there's one Jewish soul that's not born into the world, Hashem's name can't be completely revealed. Why? Because we are His name. So when we're saying that Hashem should be one and His name should be one, it means that we, the Jewish people, should be one. And by us being one, then we will be one, Hashem will be one, and that's the Geula. That's the redemption. But every single one of us has within us so to speak, a micro version of this. That you have within your own soul, Yud Kei Vav Kei. So for you to experience a complete revelation of Hashem in your life, that Hashem is going to be one, it means that you have to be one. So everything is dependent on man. It's dependent on us. And now Rabbi Nachman says like this, V'ikar Shlemut, and the essence of the completion of this process that Hashem's name becomes one through you becoming one, He Hayira. It's through Yira. How do people usually translate Yira? Fear. What type of fear do people usually think about when they think of fear? So when I think of fear, I think about when I used to ask girls out, and then I wait by my cell phone waiting until they text me back, and I had anxiety running up and down my spine, Waiting in nervous um, apprehension for what's to come. What does the psychology world call that? Anxiety. And what happens to Bali Chuva when we become, when we want to be close to Hashem? We see this word Yira and having Yira at Hashem, fear of Hashem, and what do we think about? We think about having tremendous anxiety in the face of Hashem. This has nothing to do with Yerat Hashem. There is no anxiety in the place of Yerat. How do I know this? Because there is a Mifarash, an explicit Zohar, that says in the place that you find Yerat, that you find fear of Hashem, you find Shalom, peace. Meaning that if you're experiencing fear of Hashem and your inner world is not one of absolute peace and pleasantness and tranquility, it means what you're experiencing is not called Yerat Hashem. It's called psychological anxiety. They're not the same thing. In fact, it's a complete contradiction because the Zohar says that when you actually get to experience fear of Hashem, all you experience inside is bliss, is peace. We see this explicitly elsewhere as well. What is the capital that David Melech, the soul of Mashiach, chose to be the revelation of Hashem's light in this world? Yerushalayim. Every day, three times a day, we say, Bonei Yerushalayim, that we should build Yerushalayim. That singers at the Bukharian weddings, they say, Yerushalayim, you know, and they have the fireworks going off and tears coming down from their eyes, and the high note, and it doesn't end for 20 minutes. You know what I'm talking about. I went to a Bukharian wedding recently. It was amazing. I felt like I was at Harsina. So, what is Yerushalayim? So Chazal teach, it's a composite of two words. Yira, Shalom. Fear of Hashem, and peace. So you have another explicit clue that in the place of Yira, there's Shalom. In the place of fear of Hashem, there is no anxiety. There's only peace. And not only that, it is the completion of the revelation of godliness in the world. And we know that in Gan Eden, nobody feels anxiety. We know in Olam Abba, there will be no such thing as anxiety. But there is going to be the full revelation of Yerat Hashem. So how can that be? So for this, we need to understand what does Yerat actually mean. So I want to now reference over to a sefer which is called Reshit Chochma, The first of wisdom. The beginning of wisdom. What is this sefer? 
So many people have heard, heard of the concept of Musar. What is Musar? That you're trying to work on your character traits. You have difficulties with anger, with sadness, you have difficulties with um, jealousy, or with desire for money, or wealth, or honor. So then what do you do? You learn Musar, where the rabbi makes you feel very, very small about what you're doing, and then you try and work on it. However, Rabbi Nachman, he read every single Musar book. And there was one book that he felt by far trumped all the Musar books. And this was a book that he read over and over and over and over again in his lifetime, in his 38 and a half years, and that's called Reshit Chochma. Who wrote this book? His name is Eliyahu Vidas. He was a student of the Riza Lakadosh. And the entire book is based on what is all the Musar that you gain from the Zohar? From the deepest wisdom of Kabbalah in Judaism, from all the secrets of esoteric, mystical tradition of Judaism, and what is all the Musar that you derive from them? And he starts the entire book by speaking about Yira. And he says that this is the Ikar of everything. So listen to how he describes Yira. And then we're going to understand this piece in the Kutamaran and what Rabbi Nachman is trying to bring us to. And also, you should have bells going off in your head if you're constantly feeling fear and you think it's fear of Hashem. I want you to notice how this tzaddik explains what Yerat Hashem is and what this goal is and what Rabbi Nachman is speaking about and what Rosh Hashanah is. That it says, uh, when Rosh Hashanah comes, a lion is roaring, who is not afraid? So he says like this, The first thing we need to do before we want to come close to Hashem is we need to understand clearly what is the concept of Yira, fear, or all that's brought down in the Torah. And then you can actually acquire this quality in your heart. It's something you're going to want to acquire. And not only that, you can acquire it now, because before that you were chasing after being scared. So how can you acquire your Hashem if you're running after anxiety? You can't. And through this, Shalei needs Tavinu B'Torah come up on Mim. How many times does this mitzvah come up in the Torah? Many times. Vata Yisrael, Ma'ashem Elokecha. What does Hashem show El Meimach? What does He ask from you? Ki im the Yirat Hashem Elokecha. Only that you have Yirat Hashem. Et Hashem Elokecha Tireh. And Hashem your God, you should have Yirat. This comes up so many times in the Torah. Usually there's one mitzvah. It says if there's a bird on the eggs, you should shoo the bird away before you take the egg. It says it one time, maybe twice. But this mitzvah of Yira comes up over and over and over and over. How many times do you have to explain it? You need one time. It's like this. After a person has internalized that there is in the world, Borei there is one creator in the world. That's a Kiddush. A Jew doesn't know that there's only one creator. Do we believe in many gods? No. So why is he telling you that? Because he's saying like this. There is one creator of reality in the world. It's not you. It's not your parents. It's not your grandparents. It's not the government. It's not any personal physical authority in the world. It's not scientists or doctors. There is one bore in the world, there's one creator, Hashem. So if you're looking for a new reality in your life, there's nowhere else to look besides Hashem. This is one facet. V'hubara kol anim sa'im. And he says he didn't just create the world. He created kol anim se'im. Every actuality in the world, the chair you're sitting on, Hashem created it. The molecules of air, Hashem is recreating them at every moment. This place called Ornatan, Hashem created it. 
Your Neshama Hashem created it. Every single feature of your life, Hashem has created it and is recreating it. And not only is he the one who has created everything in this physical reality and in all of spiritual reality, but he is the manhig of the world. What is a manhig? A manhig means a leader. What does a leader do? He goes in the front and he is the one who orchestrates reality. He is the manhig of the world. Have you ever seen um, an orchestra and you have the guy in the front and he's going like, this whole thing, yeah? And the people in the orchestra, they will not make a sound until they see that guy in the front going like this. I don't even know what this is. But he does this and they have this like most beautiful music that they've been working on for a whole year and everybody has their own specific piece. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world. It's a complete harmony of like a hundred different singers and instruments. And the guy's going like this. And when he stops, they stop. So what does it mean that Hashem is the manhig of the world? It means if anything takes place in this world, He is the orchestrator of that reality. That means the fact that all the Jews who are trying to get to Umar for Rosh Hashanah this year, the reason why the borders are not open is because Hashem has orchestrated such a reality. It is not because the government in the Eastern Europe has decided for political reasons it's not open. That is just what it looks like. Nothing takes place in this world unless Hashem orchestrated it. A person is sick, chas v'shalom, it's Hashem. A person has passed away, it's not COVID, it's Hashem. Everything that takes place in this world is from Hashem. Omi baladei shifo v'chiyutu ein lehem kiyum. And there's no life force in this world except for the one that Hashem pours into it. If you're here right now breathing, your heart is beating, everyone take a second and put your hand on your heart. Can you do it? Don't worry, I'm not going to make you do the Pledge of Allegiance. But just try it for a second. Can anybody feel their heart beating? No, that's a problem. You should go to the hospital. It's right next door. Or ask Hashem because He's the cause. But I assume it is beating. You just have to like, you know, move your hand around a little bit. Okay? You'll notice something amazing. Your heart doesn't stop beating. Since you were born into this world for 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 years, your heart has not stopped beating. What's the cause of every beat? Hashem. That Hashem says beat, 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 beat. If you understood just that, you could be happy all day of the miracle of your life. That Hashem is not putting your life on autopilot. He is the one who's pouring life force into it at every moment. That when a person then leaves this world, it's because Hashem does not say beat. It's a miracle. All the life force in your life is coming from Hashem. Commotion Amar, like the Pasuk in Nehemia says, Kulam, you give life force to everything. He's not being poetic. He's saying that everything that's alive in this physical world is getting pumped life force from the source of all reality that is Hashem. That's where all your life force comes from. The Ilu Shalom. And if one moment, chas v'shalom, that that life force should then be concealed, should not be coming down through all the worlds, even for one moment, everything in this world, everything in this world would be completely nullified. It would just stop existing. It wouldn't be that you would drop dead. It's that the whole world would go into bitul. Complete nullification, like it never existed. 
Hashem is recreating every aspect of reality at every moment. That, he, that everyone needs Him and He doesn't need us. And when a person realizes that, that He created you as a free gift, that He doesn't need anything from you, He just wanted to give to you, and that everything in your own life is His orchestration, His cause. There is no normal response to this, says Rav Didas, except Liroi Menon, that you should have hear of Him, that you should have awe of Him, that you should revere Him. Ukabel love all Torah of Amitzvot, and that you should want to learn about Him that you should want to do the things that he says are good for you. Why? Because he's the creator of all reality. Can you imagine you were, you were hired to be a worker at uh, Google, let's say. And the guy who's the owner of Google says, if you go in the room over there, nobody knows about it, there's the most delicious coffee. And if you act a certain way over here for a certain amount of months, I'm going to give you a raise. And if you act like this with your cohorts, with your peers, I'm going to make sure you become the manager of everyone around you. Now imagine you heard that from the owner of Google, and you decided instead to lay on the floor and play cards. Would anybody think that's normal? Would anybody think that that is a understandable response to the owner of Google coming and telling you that this is going to give you the greatest chance to succeed in this organization? Nobody would think that. And yet Hashem creates the world at every moment. He is the orchestrator of all reality. And He is constantly giving us pieces of good advice. Should we do it? Should we not do it? Should I want to be close to Him? Should I not? But there's a big party in the club tonight. And yes, it's going to completely distract me from all the things that I was trying to work on. But it's good. It's worth it. Does it make sense? No. So why do we all struggle every day? Why do we all struggle every moment of every day to be able to want to connect to Hashem, to learn from Hashem, to do the things that He says are good for us? Because we don't have something called year. We don't have emuna. We don't have awe of Hashem because we don't believe that Hashem is the cause of everything in our life. We believe in people, places, and things. And the Torah teaches that as long as a Jew believes in people, places, and things, he can never actually have Yerat Hashem. By the way, it's explicit in your tzitzit. We do not have the techelet, the blue. And in Kabbalah and in Chassidut, they explain that the white is connected to emet, to truth. And the blue, which is in exile, we're not going to get back until Mashiach comes, is connected to Yira or Amuna. It's in exile. What does that mean practically? It means that we lost Sechelet, we lost belief that Hashem is the cause and creator of all of reality, and instead we invest our emotions, our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions in people, places, and things. This is the entire exile. And this is what Mashiach is going to change in the world. That the primary thing which He is going to transform for all of us is to get you to realize that there is nothing else that's causing your reality besides Hashem. And then what do you know what to do after that? What's the benefit of that? You know where to invest your efforts. Can you imagine there was a homeless person on the street? They had no money, no nothing. They're looking for money. And you go down the street and you start begging them, please give me my paycheck this month. I never got my paycheck this month. She'll be like, who are you? I need my money. I'm dying. I can't pay for my rent. I'm not going to be able to get married if I can't support myself. She's like, I'm homeless. 
<laughs> no, if I know where the money is, I would get it also. What's the difference between that and us begging and pleading with people, places, and things? There is no difference. Hashem is the cause of everything in your life. If you have a problem, your problem is with Hashem. So go to Hashem. And now Rabbi Nachman says, this is the completion of everything. What does Hashem ask from you? Only that you should have this awe of Him. Only. That you should understand that there is nothing else besides Hashem. Hashem is the cause of everything. And now it makes sense. How can a person experience peace in their life? When a person knows that there's nothing to be worried about ever. Because Hashem loves you. Because Rabbi Nachman says the motivation of everything that Hashem does for you is His love for you. And if your year brings you to a state of understanding there's nothing else besides Hashem, He's the cause of everything in my life. So what's the natural response to that? Shalom. Peace. And that's why the Pasuk we said before we say Birkat Amazon, Softavar, what's the end of everything? That we should have year in Hashem. That Slomo Melech says, I was the wisest person who ever lived. I attained the highest level of intellect, of understanding, of physical and spiritual reality. And what do I come out with? Year at Hashem. He doesn't mean that I have anxiety running up and down my back and I'm scared to function in my life. That's not what he concluded after his whole life. His conclusion was that Hashem is the orchestrator of all of reality. That He is the recreator of reality. That He's pumping life force into all of reality at every moment. That's the Softavar. That's the last thing. Kamosh Katu, Softavar Akol Nishma. What's the end of the matter after everything is understood? Et Elohim Yara. That you should have awe of Hashem. The Gemara says explicitly, you have no Bechira in this world. You have nothing to add to this world except for one thing. Yerat Hashem. Yerat Shemayim. Ki hi shleimut kod varim. Because this is the completion of all things. It says about Mashiach, that he is going to breathe the earth Hashem. The prophet Yeshaya says he's going to breathe the earth Hashem. What does that mean? So Rabbi Nachman explains in the Kut Maran that breathing or the nose, the concept of smell, is the highest spiritual faculty you have. That's the reason why psychologically, if you, let's say, you hear something you haven't heard. Let's say you heard like, a, unfortunately, you heard a Britney Spears song you haven't heard in 10 years. So you might get dragged back 10 years ago. I made that name up. I don't know who she is, but I'm just saying. And now, let's say you saw something, though. And it's from 30 years ago. It can bring you back even further. But what happens if you smell something? Your sense of smell can bring you back to your state of being one or two years old, infancy. I don't know if you ever had this weird feeling after you smelled something that you were like transported back to like a very early stage. What's the reason? Because everything in the physical world is a reflection of something spiritual. Your sense of scent is your highest scent. It says that Mashiach is going to judge the whole world with his sense of smell. Whereas Moshe Rabbeinu judged everybody with his sight, he could see you and know what was going on. And Shlomo Melech judged with his sense of hearing, meaning he was able to understand or intuit what was going on from the situation. Mashiach is going to judge with his sense of smell. What does that mean? Rabbi Nachman says that the sense of smell is the concept of tefillah. That all of Mashiach's life force, his ability to transform reality, is going to be coming from his talking to Hashem. And because he realizes that everything comes from Hashem, he never stops talking to him. And through this, he's going to bring redemption to the whole world. So where does Yira connect it to? To Philip. That Mashiach is going to have the highest revelation of Yira. 
that he's going to tell the whole world there's nothing else besides Hashem and you're going to believe him. Rabbi Nachman used to famously say, the only difference between me and Mashiach is that nobody listens to me and everybody's going to listen to Mashiach. That he is going to makayim all the things that I spoke about, but you're going to hear what he says. And what he's going to tell you? The same thing Rabbi Nachman says. There's nothing else besides Hashem. You have a problem. It doesn't make sense to do anything else besides ask Hashem for a solution. Nothing else makes sense. But what is it that allows you to get to the point that you believe that? By speaking to Him. The more you speak to Him, the more you're able to perceive that He's the cause of everything in your life. If you still don't feel that you have that at all, it's fine. But you have an antidote. It's called your mouth. The more you talk to Hashem, the more year you're going to have. Because you're going to have a revelation that everything that's happening in your life is the cause of Hashem. And that's the completion of everything. And there's two types of Yira. There are those who they have Yira of Hashem because of His greatness. Because of how much He is causing reality to take place. Because He is Rav Vishalit. He is the original source, cause of all reality. And there is a fear that's lower than this. Meaning, He has lower fears. He's afraid of an animal. Oh, Misa, or he's afraid of a political authority. Oh, Mipachad Acher, or he's afraid of something else. So he's teaching, Rabbi Nachman teaching a very deep thing. There's no way to avoid Yira. You have to have awe or reverence or a deep, deep resonation or um, recognition of something. You can either deeply recognize that Hashem is the cause of everything in your life, or if you don't automatically, you have to associate that recognition with something else. And what does Rabbi Nachman says automatically happens when you take your recognition off the source, automatically you become scared of animals, of government authorities, of different figures in your life, different realities in your life. And what's the point, Rabbi Nachman says? Why does Hashem do this? You're supposed to see that you're scared and then ask yourself, why am I scared? Because, oh, that's right, I forgot about Yerat Hashem. I forgot that Hashem is the cause of my reality. This is a very deep thing. Rabbi Nachman saying, whenever you experience fear in your life, it's supposed to be a signal. Hashem, so to speak, gave you an aid to help you remember what you forgot. Hashem is the cause of what's happening in your life. So you're supposed to kick back into that. As soon as, oh my God, I just got into a car accident, oh, Hashem wants to remind me, Hashem's the cause of my life. That I'm worried about if I'm going to pass my test or not, and I'm scared for my life because I've been working for this for years. What am I supposed to experience when I have that fear? Take the fear and elevate it back to Hashem. And what happens automatically when you're able to do this successfully? Then all